Hey everybody, it's Rachel here from RachelTheStamper.com. And earlier today, I did a live video where I made this adorable robot card. This is from the Nuts and Bolts stamp set. So I did this as a Facebook Live. And the reason I'm showing you this, I wanted to show you, I'm not sure if it does or doesn't show up, but the shimmery crystal effects has completely dried. So it is clear but it does have a lot of sparkle through it. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's definitely noticeably different than when it's wet. So it's a really cute addition. I mean, you could even go so far as to add a little bit to these hearts up top. As a matter of fact, I think I forgot to put the shimmery, I'm sorry, the Wink of Stella, at least on these hearts. So it kind of gives a little bit of shimmer, but so this card has been sitting here. Granted, it is very dry because it's winter. It's been sitting here for probably about two hours and it's fully dry. So. It's got a lot of sparkle deep down in it, so it's really, really cute. So the reason I was sharing that, because it dried, but also I said I was going to show you another card, and since I had time, I figured I would finish it. So I actually am going to use the base that I already have made up. So this is a pretty simple base to make, and if you want directions for it, it is on my blog, but essentially you start with a five and three quarters by six and three quarter inch panel and then you're mostly cutting and scoring at one and a quarter so i do have very thorough directions on my blog and what i will do is i'm going to actually link this video to that blog post that has the robot because it's the same directions just a different card color and then i'm going to add these photos to that as well so once this posts you'll be able to see everything there um now one thing <laughs> i'm noticing when i did this is that this one is like th is the same as what happened to me the other day when i did this is that the pieces when you flip this if you don't do it the correct way a lot of times you'll notice that there's a little extra piece which i totally botched one up by doing that so you can see that this lines up here and on this side it doesn't, it sticks out farther. So this actually, believe it or not, is not even a correct base because it's not measured correctly. So what I'm gonna do, I'll probably use this for a different one, but now that I said it and I fibbed, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make that with you so you can see it being made. So I will go back to my Coastal Cabana. So this is kind of like a live video, I guess, just without the interaction. What I thought I would do is, I said I was gonna use the palms and the palms are from this really cool stamp set. So this is a stamp and die set, Paradise Palms. It's a bundle. If you buy them together, you do save 10%. So this is in the new occasions catalog. So I'm actually gonna die cut two of these palms here. And I thought what I would do is I might die cut them in black because I think I'm gonna make this like an evening card. Now I do already have some of my bugs done. So if I can find ones in the correct colors, because I did a whole bunch of these at the same time. So I have some Carmen's, and I have some bugs. There's also some um, buses here. The only issue is, and I might have to flip my card this way when I do it because the bugs are driving that way. So I kind of have to decide, is it okay if I want them driving this way, which I think will be okay, but I might change the colors. This one is a perfect color for what I want to have done. So I may just trim off the presents, but I just want to look. This one's pretty cute because I actually did this as a two-tone top. So we might use those too. So I think I'm going to try to stick with at least the bugs being pre-cut. So what I did was I stamped a whole bunch of the images. I'll keep this one out as well. I stamped a whole bunch of the images at the same time. You can see some of the buses. Here's a yellow bug. That's an ode to my Aunt Deb. She had a yellow Volkswagen bug. And um, I colored them all in with my blends. I just sat while we were watching television. But what I'm going to do with this black panel is I'm actually going to add a piece of adhesive sheet. That way when I cut out the palm tree, I can just stick it to the card. So I'm planning on doing that for this. So I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up. I don't have much of anything prepared because I wanted to kind of make it like it was live. That way you can kind of see what's going on even it, even though it is pre-recorded. So I'm going to open this up. So this needs to be, now I'm curious as to where I went wrong with that other one. I'm going to have to check. So this is six and three quarters by five and three quarters. And unfortunately you do have to use an entire panel and you can only get one card, but you do have some stuff left that you could do layering with. And then what you're going to do, and I'm going to see if I can remember this because I just made one. So we'll see if my memory is correct. So we're going to start on the six and three quarter inch side. And we're going to line this up at one and a quarter here. 
And it is useful in case you haven't noticed this before. I do have this white strip of paper that I taped underneath of my board so I can see the measurements easier. You could also use a piece of uh, tear and tape and just not take the backing off. But what we're doing is we're lining the paper up at one and a quarter and then we are going to cut from one and a quarter to four and a half. So I'm gonna move my scoring blade up. So you wanna make sure your paper is pressed up and this has a little bit of wiggle. You wanna pull this down. So measure, I'm cutting from one and a quarter to four and a half. Okay, and I'm gonna flip it 90 degrees and repeat. Once again, lining it up at one and a quarter. So since I'm down here, I'm gonna start. I'm cutting from four and a half up to one and a quarter. Okay, then I'm gonna flip it again 90 degrees. Now this one's going to be a partial cut. You're gonna do two cuts. So once again, lining it up at one and a quarter. And I'm going to cut this from one and a quarter to two and three quarters. One and a quarter, two and three quarters. And then from four, so sliding it down from four to five and a half. Oh, come on. Then I'm gonna turn 90 degrees again, lining it up. Everything here, the magic is one and a quarter. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut from five and a half to four. Lift it up, cut from two and three quarters to one and a quarter. Okay, so there is our card. Now this little teeny piece here got stuck. So what you can do is you can either pop it or, and this didn't happen on my live, so good thing it's happening here. You can pop it with your snip. So there you go. All of those just like that. Now I'm going to grab my Simply Scored scoring tool and I'm going to line this up and I'm going to score just above the cut and below the cut. So we're going to score at two and three quarters to that cut line and four to that cut line. Rotate it two and three quarters, scoring to the cut line and four, scoring to the cut line. I think that's the absolute easiest way you can do it. So you can see there. So I'm going to just for, for giggles for stinks and giggles. I just want to see what, you know what? I bet you when I line this up, I didn't line something up. I bet I lined this one up at one and a quarter and I bet I lined this side up at one and a half because it cut over farther. So that's okay. That's what happened before when I actually did my um, bus card that I had a, a sample of, because if you see this, this has a gap on the sides. And the reason being is one of them was cut correctly and the other one wasn't, so I had to trim this off. So now I know what I did. I probably cut one at one and a quarter and one at one and a half. So when you're doing this, my only note is take your time, okay? Because there's plenty of time for you to go back and fix stuff or do something else afterwards. But when you're doing this with, you don't wanna waste your cardstock essentially. So one other tip I shared also is when you have your paper here with the cut edge, because it's gonna be flopping from both directions, I usually will just take my bone folder and kind of smooth off the cut edge there. So it's not really harsh because you will see both sides of it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the first side forward. I'm just gonna Reinforce this with my bone folder. And then this one will get folded front. So there we go, now it lines up perfectly. So I probably measured one one way and one the other way. So instead of wasting this other card base, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just trim this up so it matches. And then one of them will just probably be a little bit shorter than the other. So that's just going to be the way it is. It's okay. Because I hate wasting paper. It's just, that's one thing that does drive me a little bananas. All right. So I am going to make it simple on myself and use these two white pieces. So here's one. Now, granted, my palm trees are probably going to be much shorter. Here's one and here's the other. So what I thought is, since I'm going with black palm trees, so it's kind of like a uh, sunset-ish sky. So we're saying like the sun is setting because the trees are, are dark and backlit. I figure what we could do is let's do this as a sunset kind of card. So I'm going to grab, hopefully both of these are mostly clean. Yeah, it looks a little bit, a little bit like Rachel didn't do such a good job of cleaning. So I'm just going to wipe this off on a microfiber towel. And that's my blue. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this kind of sunsetty. So I'm going to add some yellow first to start. And we'll see if we can pull this off. I'm going to do some yellow and some orange. So I'm going to go with Daffodil Delight. And I'm going to just do the same thing on both of them to kind of have some cohesion. This one, the one on the back, is going to be a little bit lighter, though, since you'll want to write on it. So I'm just adding a little bit of color. So I have a little bit of yellow. All right. And I'm going to go with a little bit of, I'll just keep these out so you can see what I use. Mango. And since I'm in the same color family, that's why I'm not changing changing brushes. This one's going to be way lighter again because this is going to be the back that we're writing on. So I'm going to try and keep this one significantly lighter. I'm going to come back in with a little bit more mango on this other one. Okay, I'm going to add a very small amount of Poppy Parade on my front panel. So since this was yellows and oranges, I'm just going to grab a different brush. That way I can bring in some reds. I do need to order more of these. I say that every single time and I always forget to order them. Just a little bit of red. And then we're going to make the top darker. Okay. So Poppy Parade. And now I'm going to go into, as a matter of fact, instead of using Pacific, I'm going to start with Misty. So I have my blue. And I'm just going to go just a teeny bit of, this was the red. Because I don't want too much on this. I don't want this to be so dark that you can't write anything on it at all. So that's just a little bit of red. So a little bit of Misty Moonlight. So I'm kind of flipping this around now. Now here's the thing. With using, I always have little scraps of stuff here. With using these blender brushes, sometimes you can have fingerprints that will show up. So if you have a little scrap of paper, I'm just going to take this just to hold it and kind of blend from there. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more. So again, Misty Moonlight is what we're going to start with. Oh, I should have blended off before I did that, but we'll say la vie. Try it over here. And I don't want this to have this line. That was, I should not have had that that close. I should have had it so it was down farther. We will be able to blend that out eventually. Huh, hopefully. <laughs> and now I'm going to bring out Night of Navy. Because I really just want this just to hold this in place. Sometimes it just takes a little bit longer with your blending to get it the way you want. And since I have that hard edge, it's probably going to take a little bit more. Might actually have to blend in a little bit more red. Okay, I'm going to put this away. I'm going to bring in a little bit more of my poppy. And this probably is going to require more blending than I originally intended. So I'm going to just take this and flip it up here to hold. So again, my poppy was on this little brush. And once we have the other components on here, it may very well cover it up. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for. All right. And just one more thing. I'm actually going to grab, I'm going to rub this out just a smidge. I'm going to try a little bit more daffodil, but I want to make sure that my mango is mostly out of this. just to bring a little bit more of a yellow brightness to the bottom. Probably should be blending over a clean space so I don't pick up that navy. Now 
So one thing about when you're blending is you kind of have to be aware of what you're working near because you can bring in different colors. So it is really important to have a kind of a clean space to pull from. So when you're pulling here, if you were using this, you're going to be pulling the navy. You're going to blend this with your yellow. So just kind of be aware of what you're doing. It takes practice. It's not always that you're going to get something correct the very first time you're doing it. It's a process, right? So someone else said that earlier. And that's a really good way of thinking it. And a lot of times I do forget that, unfortunately, because I give myself a hard time and it's a process when you're making something. I have no idea what I'm doing with this card. I just had the thought of doing this, which I thought would be pretty cool. All right. So I'm going to take a piece of my adhesive sheet and I don't exactly know how large these palm trees with the fronds are going to be. So I'm going to just put two full strips here and I'm going to do kind of one, um, back to back. So bottom of the top, just so I can kind of match them up in case I need more than one. Okay. So you have those two. So I'm going to grab this palm tree right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one this way and then I'm going to flip it and cut one that way. And I might even do this little piece of brush because depending on what we do or don't have to cover up in this little piece here, just to see what we come up with. So what I'm going to do to start is, you want to flip this over. So my adhesive is on this side primarily. So I'm going to start over here. Actually, I'll go this way. Here. And then I'm going to put this one down here. And let's see. Where? Hold on one second, because I know I'm going to put a piece of tape down. I know I went longer. Yeah, so I'm going to go down here. With this one just grabbing a little scrap piece of post-it tape and then this one i'll flip so it's upside down so i should have enough room to do this here okay so i'm going to run these through my die cutting machine and in case you're new i still have my big shot i do uh use it quite often even though i have the magnetic plate sometimes it cuts better than others so i do usually add my adhesive to hold stuff in place and since this is a brand new die, I'm passing it backwards and forwards. So it's going through in both directions. And then I wanted to recut this one more time. Okay, so let's see what these look like. Uh, hopefully they cut all the way. You can always use this for something else. And I believe this tape except for this one has seen its day. So the rest of them will retire. And then what I'm gonna do is turn this upside down and I'll use that piece that I still have just to hold this in place. And I'm gonna cut this one more time and then I'll just pull all this stuff out at once. So same thing again, I am gonna go back and forth. That way I make sure I cut everything all the way through. Okay, Let's see what this looks like. All right. This one cut really nicely, but this one on the first thing didn't cut quite as well. So what I'm gonna do is since it's already still in there, I'm gonna just line this back up one more time from underneath and I'm actually gonna run it through upside down. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. So I am gonna switch to have my nicer plate on the bottom. This is lined up, I'm just gonna set it down and then I'm putting my cutting plate on the top. So this will actually meet more pressure because the cutting part of the die is face up and it'll meet with the roller. And a lot of times it will give you a better impression. You can hear that still crackling through. So if you ever have a problem with your dies and they're just not cutting the way you think they should, try running them through face up. So this should pop right out now. And again, I'm definitely not gonna need this much of the trunk of the tree, but See, I'm going to do this one once while I'm at it, just for the heck of it. So same thing here. Oops. That one didn't go quite as much, so it probably actually was cut okay from the get-go. All right, so we have our two pieces and I also cut out this palm frond and the bottom is this popping let's see 
This looks pretty good. Yeah, this one's fine. Not sure if I'm gonna use the palm frond or not. I definitely am gonna use this though, so I wanna pull this off. Sometimes just the issue is that the backing paper didn't cut. So I'm actually gonna just remove this and I'm gonna stick this onto my silicone mat just for now so I have it. And then the rest of this, pop this off. I have my frond here just in case I need it, but the rest of this, I'll just save this for a scrap. Okay, so back onto the card here. So we're going to go ahead and peel this backing off because I kind of want an idea of what I'm gonna do with my palm trees and my cars. Just getting those couple little pieces off. Okay, so we're going to take this. I'm gonna bring this down here just so I have something to stick it to. And, whoops, there's one more little black spot stuck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one this way because remember, we don't wanna go outside of the square. So maybe some of this, the adhesive didn't stick down quite as well because then it's gonna impede our movement. So I'm gonna have this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and just snip this off. We could put another one, what if we actually need one? Might kind of be nice just with the one. Let me see, we want it to be front. This is gonna to give too much ground effect. So what I'm actually gonna do is, I think I'm just gonna omit this. I'll put this maybe on the back. So this one, we're gonna have that have our bugs. Let's see. I think I'm going to use the bright pink and the green. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my scissors. I've already colored these. I can save this for something else. And I'm just going to trim off the presents. Same for this one. And these don't have to be Christmas presents. They could be birthday presents. They could be wedding presents. I mean, you could use these for most anything. So only thing we're going to have is one and one just like so and then i think maybe i'll use this for the back this can kind of be the grounding portion of our words yeah so this is the back of the card and we probably could put a little palm in here i mm, have to think about that that might be a cute idea but i don't really know if i want to go that way or not so again just kind of uh following our little layout here from day to night. We really didn't have anything grounding our vehicles here either. So it's just kind of something cute. So we're gonna go with the same, but I feel like I think I want the pink bug. Yeah, I think it's gonna be just a little bit like that. Cause I do want this wheel to kind of cover up my palm base there. So I probably could have cut this off a little bit lower, but we're gonna go with it. It's okay. That's what happens, right? You get to, you get to pick what uh, what is reality when you do your own cards. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop these guys down and I'm gonna put both of them up on dimensionals. So let's see. I'm gonna put three. And I'm gonna put this one down first because I need to find out, do I need to glue or what am I doing with the pink one? So I probably really only need a dimensional here in the back and then the rest of it I can glue on. Let's just see. Yep, that looks pretty good. And I don't want it to go too far down. I'm trying to keep it even with the, there we go. So I'm just gonna put some glue onto this. Looks good. Nice part is that glue is really slippery, so it's kind of going up and moving with the bug. So all I have to do is just hold that in place for a moment. I don't think I did this, so I'm just gonna be, just being a little bit extra, put a little bit of Wink of Stella, try to make sure it's clean on the windows because it will pick up the color. 
Now, granted, I did color these with Stampin' Blends, but I'm sure it probably still works the same way. Okay, so put a little bit of that on there. All right, so those are going to be our driving bugs. And then on this side, we're going to have kind of more like the evening scene. I don't know. I don't know. I'm torn if I should have this palm. Only thing is I'm going to have to trim it off if I have it popping out. I could kind of probably put it underneath a little bit and then trim some of the edges off and then pop this behind. Let's see. Let's just take a look and just see. It could kind of look cute. All right, I'm going to lift this up. We're going to go with this. This will just have a smaller space to write. So whoever's going to get this card, first of all, they're going to love it. So they're probably really not going to be too upset by what is or isn't written on it. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to pull this off and this is what happens when you have a sheet that is split in the middle so if you have a really detailed part of this when i put that i'm actually going to just show you what i mean when i put that adhesive sheet on the back here it's split in the middle so if you have a part you can see this is split and split if you have a part like this it's better that you have it on the full sheet and then have the split maybe on the trunk portion so just for if you're doing that with your card. And once again, I'm gonna bring in my silicone mat because I know I'm gonna have to clean some of this stuff off of here because I don't want the whole thing. And then I also don't want this to extend past the line that we have here. So I'm actually gonna trim this right at the edge. It's a little bit too short. Okay, and then I'm also going to, just for insurance purposes, put a little bit of glue right here just to make sure that sticks. That's what my grandfather always used to say whenever we played cards. And he would have all these extra cards, specifically when we started playing Rummy. <laughs> and he would always say he saved stuff for insurance. So a little bit of extra insurance there. All right, so now all I'm going to do, because again, this will trip up the mechanism of your card. It probably wouldn't actually so much on this side. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to just trim it. So I'm just going to trim to the edge. I'm going to flip it. It's a little bit easier that way. And there we go. All right. So then that. And you could stamp a little sentiment there if you wanted to. But quite honestly, we have so much stuff going on. I think we'll leave this blank so our sentiment can really, or whatever we write on our message, can really shine through more than anything. So this was pretty fun to work with, more so because of having the adhesive sheet made it super duper easy. Okay, so one other thing. So again, we have, this is going to be the front. So it's going to go on here. This probably could use a little bit of insurance gluing as well, so I'm just going to put just a teeny bit under here. Teeny and just a teeny. Give that a press. Nice part about liquid glue is it does dry clear, so you won't see any of it when it's finished. All right, so I'm going to put this down, but I still think I definitely want a sentiment on the front of this. I'm just trying to decide what I want. Since I know this is going to be on the back and we're not adding anything, I'm going to put this one on. So I'm going to just put some liquid glue here. This is the back and I'm just trying to make sure I have it lined up because that other one I put on was crooked. All right, this is the front. All right, and I'm going to just reinforce my bone folder. All right, so with the front, the only thing we have to figure out what to do for this is sentiment. I have a little teeny square here. I'm not sure what this is going to look like, so we're going to see. So for our bugs, where are they? We only have a couple sentiments to choose from in here, which are plenty. But um, driving by just to say hi is what I used for the other one. You've got style is kind of cool. We do have some other sentiments in the special moments. This is These are nice only because they're a lot of very, um, I don't say generic, but they're very simple sentiments is I guess a good way of saying it. Thinking of you is just a nice sentiment that you could send to somebody anytime. And I really like that one. So I think I'm going to make this because a lot of times I'm always looking for thinking of you and I never have it. 
So I'm going to put this here. Side note, I found something really cool you can do with these. So I'm actually going to see if I can grab a video on that sometime soon. Since we have also, in case you didn't notice, you can stick these directly here. So we have a couple different things we can do with that. So I'm going to try to remember to film a video and show you guys. So thinking of you, and I think I'm going to put this just on a really small white square and then I'm going to trim it. And I think what I'm going to do is I want to keep it so it's something that's really going to pop. So a crazy, no, you know what? I think I'm going to go with Bermuda Bay. I'm going to do Bermuda Bay. So I'm going to do thinking of you. And before I hit that, I'm going to do one other thing. What color was this? This was the mango. I'm just putting a little bit of color wash from that. And then thinking of you. Just so it's not stark white against the sunset that we did. Just going to give this a second to dry. I'm going to move all these guys out of the way. Just clean up just a little bit while we're waiting for that. Because every time I think something dried long enough and then the next thing you know, I smudge it. Oops. Move this over. And I might do a dimensional for that as well. Okay, so I'm just going to grab my snips and I'm just going to cut right along the letters. Kind of, even though it's very scripty, I'm trying to keep it super tight. Okay, and then go like that. Just something different. There you go. That actually fits perfectly. And you know what? I don't even think I actually need dimensionals on this. I think I'm going to just put this down flat. Let me see if I can get, since I just plugged that back up, let's see if I can get this to glue. Okay. Pop my dimensionals away. And this card really could be any any time card. It doesn't have to be for any. It could be for just I'm thinking of you because I miss you and I haven't seen you. Or thinking about you because I had a funny dream about you last night. Whatever the case may be. I'm going to do one more thing with my bone folder because the way I did this. I just want to make sure that all my edges are nice and smooth. I cut a lot and I really hate changing blades when I really don't need to change blades yet but sometimes you'll notice that you'll end up with little ridge lines so I honestly just do this a lot of times do it on both sides it kind of calms down the ridge on it that way it's really nice all right and then just to make sure this fits I do like to put this on when it's open so I'm going to put this on this way same thing again I am going to use a considerable amount of glue because I want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere so liquid glue is my preferred glue when you're trying to fit something into a space and you have to make sure you can adjust it if need be. Okay. My niece would love this card. Probably would remind her of the beach. Honestly, either of my nieces. They both love the beach a lot. And they love um, vintage cars. Cars older than this, but... And the nice part about this with the wheels, we do have a little bit of space. So as long as you stay above that line, you see you have this space here underneath. So that almost can act as the road that you're traveling on. So there you go. Cute little thinking of you card. Thinking of you in the beach, most definitely. It's an adorable card. And we are able to fit in our bugs. Now you could totally leave one of the presents on. So just for example, say we were going to leave this present on. And where are my snips? I'm going to cut this just because of the way I did this. So, say you wanted to change this to a birthday card. Because you were like, this is a great thinking of you card, but I really need a birthday card. So, I cut off the presents. I did already color them. I thought pink and orange was absolutely adorable. Actually, it is pale papaya and polished pink. But you could pop this up so this stuck out even farther. So the presents were like 3D. You could put the presents behind. You could put the presents in front. You could put the presents on the other side like they were hidden in the beach. <laughs> beach grass, something cute like that. So you can always, even if you've taken something off, 
which I did with the robot because I accidentally cut off his leg. And you could pop this off with even more dimensional. So it'd be even sticking out farther and it would be adorably cute. So totally could make this into a really fun birthday card as well. And then as I did when I did this one earlier, you could take something that's inside and bring it outside. So like the heart shooting up. Um, the only thing is you could stamp some palms, but you wouldn't want to extend them because you don't want anything to impede the opening and movement of the card. And if it, it does, it's just going to end up getting ripped, unfortunately, in the long run. So I hope you guys like this card. One other thing I do want to mention when you are doing stuff with blending brushes, because this can be intimidating for a lot of people. And I know that, and even myself included, as this dries, it does take on a totally different hue than kind of what you started with. So if you're looking at something and you're like, oh, that does not look good, sit it down, go change over your laundry or have a cup of coffee. And when you come back later, a lot of times when it lightens up and everything evaporates out of it, it does settle into a much lighter version of what it looked like. And a lot of times it's a lot prettier than what you thought it was when you walked away from it 10 minutes ago. So this card, once I ended up with that line, I thought this is not going to be good. But honestly, the reblending really helped, but you can't really even see the harshness of the line, which we had a straight line in the beginning. So this ended up turning out really cute. But I also think adding in the other elements distracts your eye that you don't really even know where that line was in the first place, which also is very helpful. So I hope you guys enjoyed this card today. It was really, really fun to make. These cards are fun also because they're super interactive. And again, so many different color schemes you can do for these. And they really are quite simple. Once you make one, and as long as you <laughs> follow the correct measurements and don't go cutting crazy. Again, I am going to trim this one down. So I'll just show you really quickly before we wrap up here. Move this to the side. Oh, you can add so many fun things to these. That's the best part. Now, what I will do for this, because I like to do things as simply as possible, is I will flip this over so I can see the edge. I will line this up almost exactly with my, so I want to make sure it can pass with my trimmer. Now I may end up with a little line that hangs over, but you know what? It's so minimal. The other thing you can do at that point is you'll take it and you'll go. So look where this was, right? We cut all the way to the edge. So you open the flap up and then you'll just put it just a hair. And I mean, just a hair over. Trim off that one little piece. And oops, I didn't even go, <laughs> hold on. My trimming didn't work because I wasn't quite over far enough. <laughs> so I'm going to go back one more time. There we go. So I'm going to trim off that one little piece. And now it lines up. So even though, and here's the thing. Because I guarantee you when I did this, this is exactly what happened. One of these got cut a one and a quarter, which was this one. And this one probably got cut quarter. Yep. At one and a half. So I didn't do this correctly. Now, granted, it looks kind of goofy on this, but when it's closed, nobody's going to know the difference. So it really just depends on what you're comfortable with. And if you are looking at this and you're kind of thinking like, eh, this really doesn't look the same. The other thing you could always do too is you could trim this so it was a little bit shorter. So for example, I'll take, and I'm not going to take off too much. I'll take off maybe like three eighths of an inch. So then you will have a card that is bigger on or more open on both sides, but it really just depends. And honestly, if really you're getting to the point where you're like, you can't, you just don't like the way this is, you can always cut out your middle panel and use it for something different. You could use this to cut out little pieces of scraps as well. I probably still <laughs> will make this into a card, even though when you open it, it doesn't look right. But quite honestly, as long as it's standing up, once the person pulls it out and they stand it up, they're really not going to pay attention to what it looks like. Trust me, they're going to be happy that you didn't send them a bill in the mail and they got some happy mail for a change. So I want to thank you guys so very much for watching me. If you have any questions about this, you can always leave me a comment. You can shoot me an email at reachthestamper at gmail.com. If you'd like to get any of these supplies, this is free, the celebration set with a $50 purchase. You can get the Carmigillas, the buses, and the bugs for free. There are also some $100 choices. The nuts and bolts stamp set is awesome. The palms, Paradise Palms is a great bundle that's also brand new as well. So there's lots of stuff for you to choose from them in there. If you have any questions though about what you should or should get or maybe a suggestion on what to use, please feel free to send me a message or an email. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again real soon.